and I'm not suggesting you over-insure. Right. But I'm telling you don't under-insure. Um, because a lot of the problems that happen right here in the shop and in the office could be resolved with the right policy because those cars that have the right policy that are going to fix your car properly are going to go to the front of the line. Hello everybody and welcome back to the airing of grievances. I'm Eric Gramer, this is Robert Grieve, and it is very nice to have you along with us. Alright, so uh, before we actually get started with today's video, let us just say thank you. Thank you to all the people who have not only taken the time to watch the videos, but engage us in the comments as well as give us the thumbs up and sharing this video with your friends and your family. As we like to say every single time, this is not an industry piece. This is not necessarily for the industry. Uh, we do a lot of that kind of stuff in other ways. But this is for you, the consumer, the average everyday driver, and you need to know the stuff that happens behind the scenes here in the uh, auto body or collision world. And so we feel very, very passionate about that. And uh, if you're new here, welcome. We're super happy to have you. Do us a favor, click the subscribe button and the notify bell. That will help YouTube know that you need to know when we're having these videos air. You can also just check your watch because if it's Saturday morning and it's 9.30 in the Mountain Standard Time, that's when this is happening. We're on the air. That's right. Uh, and if you're an old-time regular here, uh, we say welcome back. We're super grateful for you as well. And if you don't mind, all of you, give us the big thumbs up. That like button really does help the YouTube algorithm show this content to more people. And we're starting to see a snowball effect, slow but sure, as more and more people become aware of the content. All right, Rob, that being the case, good morning, my friend. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Super nice to be here. And Rob, uh, one of the things that, that we love the most about doing these YouTube videos is that we have people who, friends that we haven't met yet, Yep. right, reaching out to us in the comment section, um, and they ask really important questions. And so today we're going to take a look at one of those questions that came off of one of our old videos. I'll mm -hmm. post the link to that video right up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a really relevant question. And I think that you hit it on the, on the head when you said, uh, if one person is asking it, there's probably a lot more who want to know the answer. So, so with we'll that, being, about it. that being the case, uh, introduce us to our new friend. Uh, JN. JN, thank you. Yep for uh, leaving us a comment on the video, and we can't wait to get to your question. And I have to tell you uh, right out of the box, I love reading the comments and I respond to them. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it means that you guys are engaged. Yeah. And that's really the thing that, that we're most interested in is the engagement, so. Yeah, so uh, JN uh, posted a, a question uh, on one of our older uh, videos, not that they're too old, we've only been doing them this year, uh, and the, uh, the uh, particular <clears throat> episode was uh, insurance company tactics, who should you trust? Okay. And he writes in and asks, in short, should you go with your car insurance company's recommended uh, list of body shops or pick your own? Okay. What a great question. It's a great question, and we actually get asked that a lot mm -hmm. uh, and and to lay the foundation before we get to the answer because mm -hmm. your answer is going to be interesting I know that for a fact um, when you get into an accident we've been we've all been programmed to turn our insurance card over and dial the 1-800 number mm -hmm. which then they are more likely to say something to the effect of you can take it anywhere but we have a uh, a preferred list, right, of, of body shops. Yep. And we'll talk a little more about what that means. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds good. There's actually a term for that. When oh. when you have an accident and you turn over your card and you call the 800 number, Yeah. 
Uh, it's called First Notice of Loss. Oh, okay. And insurance companies love it when they are the first notice of loss because then they get to control the, the outcome a little bit. If instead you already had a shop that you were talking to uh, or that you knew of, you know, I would call them and then they'll help you with the insurance side of things. So, uh, and then there's, there's manufacturers now that will know that your vehicle has been in an accident. Because of the computer sending up information yeah. to the satellite saying, All the hey, rest of that. big trouble. Yeah. Uh, and they may even pop on the phone and say, hey, we'll get you to one of our certified places if you like. And they'll arrange for a tow truck, ambulances, whatever you need, and get your car to a uh, manufacturer certified you, shop. You just so. described uh, <laughs> a tangled bowl of spaghetti. Yeah, first notice of loss is a, is a very, very uh, important thing. Okay. All right. So, so I heard that the insurance companies want to be your first notice of loss, that it might be better for you if you know a body shop to be your first notice of loss. And in the midst of all that, the actual automobile manufacturers... Have some recommendations. Have recommendations. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. The plot thickens. <laughs> All right. So read the question again. And All let's, right. Let's In short, it. should you go with your car insurance company's recommended list of body shops or pick your own? Okay. So I made uh, just a short reply because it's, it's not real confusing. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend picking your own. It's going to take a bunch of research to find the right one, though. Uh, the only good thing about choosing one of theirs is it comes with a guarantee. Sadly, you will probably land up needing that. Okay. If you ever have need of one, please reach out to me and let me see if I have any contacts in the area because we have contacts all over the nation. All over the nation. And, you know, and this, this brings up a good point. Uh, we're here in the Denver market and, uh, you know, we serve the front range and, and virtually all of Colorado, uh, really, but, uh, you do have contacts all over the nation. You sit on a national board, uh, as a director of, of, uh, that national organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know great body shops coast to coast and, and just so you know, uh, there are great body shops out there. There are. So, uh, but it's going to take a bunch of research to find them. I tell it doesn't take a bunch of research. Let me just challenge you there, okay? <laughs> it takes Rob Grieve. Uh, if if you know, and you're watching this, if you know this guy, it doesn't take a bunch of research. Just call up the number. What is the number, by the way? Uh, three zero three seven six one nine two one nine. We'll put that uh, also down here in the uh, in the video so that you can see it. All right. So JN decided to reply to that comment. Yes. And he asks even a more important question. Oh. Uh, so, I mean, just an amazing question. And it's one that a lot of people ask. Yep. We hear it here, you know, the same way. Most around me offer lifetime warranty on their repairs. My concern is that they, the ones not on the insurance approved list, while highly reputable, if not more so, may have trouble getting the insurance company to pay for all the needed parts. What happens in this case? This happens all the time. Yes, a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> JN, again, thanks, man. Thank you. You teed it up. This this video is not just for you, but it's for everybody else who yep. has Asking these, these questions. same questions. Yes. All right. So. Uh, they might the, the body shops who are not on the preferred list, but who might be more reputable, probably are. Mm -hmm. um, will there be a struggle between the insurance company not wanting to p pony up for the proper repair? Uh, it kind of depends. Uh, it depends on a lot of things, but one of them is going to be what insurance company is handling the claim. Yep. So let me tell you how I replied to that. Okay. And it's a little longer reply. All right. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, JN, that's a great question. You have to find one that will advocate for you. Another thing to do 
is make sure that you have a good insurance policy with an OEM rider on it. That solves a lot of issues right out of the box. If your policy states they can use aftermarket or used parts, that's all they owe uh, you no matter where you take your vehicle. However, we've had tremendous success improving aftermarket and used parts are not the right way to repair a vehicle. There are some insurance companies that will stick by what they owe for according to the policy, and in that case, sadly, you would be responsible for the difference in the prices. Yeah. Uh, like I said before, starting with the right insurance policy to begin with solves a lot of issues. Yeah. Okay. So there was what you wrote. Mm-hmm. Let's peel back the layers and tell us what you think. Uh, I, I think that uh, you should get your car fixed properly before it gets wrecked. Now, how do you do that? You make sure you have the right policy. And you have, make sure you have uh, the right verbiage in it. You make sure you have the right riders in it. And, uh, and I'm not suggesting you over-insure. Right. But I'm telling you don't under-insure. Um, because a lot of the problems that happen right here in the shop and in the office could be resolved with the right policy. Because those cars that have the right policy that are going to fix your car properly are going to go to the front of the line. Yeah. And they're going to go through the whole system a whole lot faster because there isn't all this petty, you know, nickel and diming back and forth. Right, right. Uh, so fixing your car before you need it fixed is is probably the way to go. And you know what? Stop what you're doing right now. Turn this thing off and call your insurance agent. Ask them, if I have a wreck, what kind of parts are you going to use on my vehicle? And... Are you going to cover all the manufacturer's procedures uh, that need to be done to repair my car correctly? Go ahead. We'll be here. Yeah. We'll just wait. Yeah, we'll wait, wait right here. Yeah. <laughs> do you think they're going to call? I hope they do. Yeah. I hope they do. Well, let's give them a second. So, starting with the right policy fixes a lot of stuff. Yeah. Now, it... If the insurance company writes an estimate on the vehicle, keep in mind that the person that wrote that estimate for the insurance company does not fix cars. They write estimates. And they write estimates on your behalf or on their behalf? On their behalf. On their behalf. Exclusively. Their job, according to one such uh, est est estimator and expert, said under oath, in testimony to a House committee uh, in the state of Washington that his job was to estimate the... Adjust the claim. Uh, adjust the claim down. down. So... Just, just making sure you all know that. Right. So there's, you, there's no problem finding a body shop that will fix it for whatever this adjuster wrote it for. Yeah. They're, they're everywhere. But that's probably not the way the car should be fixed. Uh, because they, they include aftermarket parts. Well, it, it's not only the parts. It's, over, they, they overlook the, the processes that need to happen according to the manufacturer uh, and their recommendations. And We just you know, did a video last week on that, and we'll put a link to that right up here. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of things that get skipped over in the name of saving the insurer money and, and 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 a lot is not necessarily you know just that but they don't know because they're not repairers they're, they're not responsible for fixing the vehicle they're responsible for writing an estimate that favors the insurance company okay uh, and if somebody fixes your vehicle for that amount of money chances are you're not getting a, a, a good repair now there are insurance companies that do a great job we have made a video about those yeah. as well and i will link them right up there so let's just call them out amica amica has a different philosophy uh than almost any other insurer that i've come across they want to make the most inclusive estimate up front yeah uh 
to lower the rental time and the amount of supplements because every time there's a supplement that takes days to resolve. Time and, is money. And they want to get you, they want to get your car fixed for you. Yeah. And so they manage their rental expense and stuff by doing the right job up front. And they have a ridiculous amount of customer loyalty because of it. Yep. And one JD Power Award right after the next. And yep. you know what? They, they, they reward excellence. Yep. Uh, so, uh, you know, there are companies out there that you can get that you can feel assured your possessions are going to be taken care of in, in, a, in your favor. In your favor. There you go. All right. So... Okay, so uh, this this struggle that goes on between this, you say we should start with uh, repairing our car properly before we get into an accident. Yep. Which means we should find the right policy. Can you find or purchase the right policy from a company that is notoriously challenging? Can no, you, you can't. No, I mean, if if you did, uh, taking one out that doesn't have the appraisal clause. Yeah, you could always invoke your appraisal clause, but that becomes a adversarial relationship between you and your insurance company now, and uh, they don't like that, and they punish you even more if you do that. Mm. But the result is. Uh, you'll get your car fixed properly because the, the the appraisal clause, you know, you got two or three people now that are going at it uh, to come up with a fair settlement. So yeah. there's there's a better likelihood. But that's not one. If if you're with a company that you need to invoke your appraisal clause with, you're not with the right company. So I believe we did a video on that. We did as well. Yep, yep. It's very popular. Link up there. <laughs> anyway, you know the, the the thing about and w what great questions and I and again I love you know the fact that people write in and ask questions and I'll answer them best I can. Uh, but you know, it's important. Again, I'm not suggesting that you overinsure. Sure. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a consumer too, and I have a house and I have some cars and. Uh, you know, a tractor and a few other things. Yeah. And I make sure sure they're insured properly so that if anything were to happen, it's not going to be a grind. Right. They're just going to make me whole. That That's what the policy is there for. Sure. And uh, that's, I recommend that you just take a minute, ask your agent, your broker, what happens how is my vehicle going to be repaired? If they say, oh, well, we're going to send it to a place that's going to fix it just fine, look for another policy. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, JN, again, thank, thank you. you for your question in, this, in the comment section. And if you're watching this right now and you've got a question or, or something that's bugging you and you want to ask it, drop it in the comment section of this video. We will see it. We will respond to it. And who knows, maybe we'll even make another video uh, with your question and Rob's answer. And uh, I'm just going to remind you that if you have these questions and you need a more timely response... Um, pick up the phone and call me. Pick up the phone. We've got the number right here on the screen. We've got the number uh, down below in the comment set, or excuse me, in the description box. And uh, we are here to serve you. And it really is the way that it goes there. No matter where you are, anywhere in the country, you don't have to do a lot of research. You need to know Rob Grief. And this has been the airing of grievances, my friend. Happy Saturday to you. Thank you for your time. Happy Saturday to and you. Thank you for yours. Thanks for tuning in.